Hi, welcome back. I'm going to show you a little bit more about how I would go about crafting an essay, a literary analysis essay using an ebook. So, as you saw in one of my previous screencasts, I was speaking about um, a, a possible essay topic, a thesis around the auditory imagery used by Ray Bradbury in Fahrenheit 451, particularly the function of noise and um, auditory, loud auditory images as a way to impede thinking and to sort of dumb, numb the senses, to sort of dumb the people and sort of dumb down their thinking. So let's say I'm ready to start selecting quotes, my, my six to nine quotes. We require two to three quotes per, per paragraph in an essay. So let's pretend I wanted to use this quote up here that I've already highlighted. And I can come to this quote. I have my Kindle for PC app open and the Kindle for Mac app is extremely similar. On the left here, I've chosen the notes and marks. There I can make it go away actually and I can bring it right back. Um, my notes and marks, and I've chosen notes only I could also drop this down and choose all my notes and marks. I'm actually operating this notes only um, because I'm looking at some of the notes that I've made so I can notice patterns. If you notice here, auditory images, auditory image, auditory sound, contrast to all the noise. This is just a, a way that I am uh, locating my quotes. So I've clicked this one here. I can also click a different one, auditory image drowning in sound. I could even take this quote here. So let's pretend I wanted, I wanted to copy and paste this. So. In a standard paper version of the book, you'd have to hold open the book and retype it by looking back and forth. Here, I can use my mouse to highlight the quote that I want. I'm actually going to take it all the way down um, to the next part, even though I had to highlight it. He came out of the room sweating and on the point of collapse. Again, to show the effect of the noise on him. Now here I have uh, highlight, edit note, copy, and I want copy. So I'm going to click copy. And then I'm going to open up my Word document. Uh, I have just a blank Word document here. I might already have part of my essay going. I might have normally a thesis written here at the top. And I can uh, choose to right click and paste. And here is my quote. You drowned in music and pure cacophony. He came out of the room sweating and on the point of collapse. So I would add quotation marks and beneath it provides me a uh, citation. It has the author, it has the date, I think it believes that it is 1129, usually the date matches the date here, but uh, Fahrenheit 41, page 42, Simon & Schuster, Schuster Inc., Kindle Edition. So for me as the student, because I'm going to be using a parenthetical and a work cited, this is not actually uh, the proper MLA format, so I would, I could either manipulate this um, a citation to match MLA format and put it at the end of my paper as my work cited, or I could re rewrite it using correct, correct MLA format. What I do like is that we are given the page number here because we ask students in MLA format to use a parenthetical citation following their quote. So uh, this is how, what I would use this citation for. It automatically pops up, which is appreciated, um, but I usually go ahead and delete that and then I do an MLA style citation. In a, one of my dreams for the uh, Kindle for PC app is that it would allow you to choose a citation style, MLA, APA, Chicago, etc., so that a student could tailor um, that copying and pasting and it would produce a citation that would match the MLA style, but that's all right. Um, so that's how a student would do that. And they could perhaps begin, you know, integrating this quote into a paragraph and you know they would start by saying uh, noise is you noise from the television is used to numb the senses and maintain a state of non thinking the sound seems to exhaust the reader for example when Guy exits the parlor, he, s he narrates, and then there's my quote, you drown in music, you come out of the room sweating and on the point of collapse. Okay, and then I would continue. So here, one um, advantage I find to using a, a, a quote from an ebook is I've copied and pasted directly. So there's no danger in the student mistyping the quote and I found this at least one person every time I assign an essay re-enters the quote, types the quote incorrectly from 
the paper book source. And this can be very inconvenient. Sometimes that mistake is embarrassing. There could be a, a typo that was particularly um, noticeable. And oftentimes they don't think to proofread their quotes. They typed them from the book and they moved on and, and don't necessarily proofread them with a close eye. And it sometimes affects the point they're trying to make. Sometimes they've changed a word or punctuation that alters the meaning, and then they misinterpret the quote because they're working from the quote as they typed it, not the quote as it was in the book. So one thing that I appreciate um, as an English teacher with the copying and pasting from the ebook is I know that they are getting the original text exactly as it was written in the source. One other thing I wanted to show you is how a student might locate a quote if they don't necessarily already have it highlighted and a note attached. So one um, benefit to my system, as I've shown you here, is that I have highlights with notes attached that have some keywords associated, rhythm, auditory images, bombardment, silence. So I am I am working from already my notes are already organized here on the left. What if a student either doesn't have notes or they want to write on a topic they didn't necessarily take notes on or, or highlight specific passages about? Maybe through discussion they thought, you know, I I really want to write about noise and I didn't do any highlighting. I didn't necessarily notice. I've noticed it through our um, through our discussions. So a student can click on this little magnifying glass and that brings up the search bar. So if I've noticed a recurring motif, um, particularly of noise and sound, I can actually, let me see, where does the word noise show up in the text? So if I type in noise, let me see if any matches were found. We have one match found. Here's noise where noise shows up so I can click that link and it's gonna show me but now tonight somehow someone had slipped this one was spoiling the ritual the men were making too much noise laughing joking to cover her terrible accusing silence below so there's a great quote what about the word sound maybe I want to use that quote maybe I want to highlight it but maybe I want to try sound whoa look how many times the word sound appears So if I give it a second, it's finding all the matches for the word sound. So here we go. So I can scroll through this list. Um, great tides of sound. And in her ears are the little seashells, the thimble radios tamped tight, and an electric ocean of sound, of music and talk, and music and talk coming in, coming in on the shore of her unsleeping mind. The room was indeed empty. Every night the waves came in, bore her off on their great tides of sound. So here I have 43 matches for the word sound when I know I can at least try. Now, some of these aren't going to work. Your laugh sounds much nicer than it did. Maybe I could talk about that, maybe not. And this isn't necessarily going to give me all the quotes that I have found that include auditory images. But at least I'm finding the, the, the recurrence of the word sound. This works especially well. The moon also, also plays a role in the color white in Fahrenheit 451. So I actually might want to search and say, how many times does the word moon show up? And maybe I want to develop a thesis around the symbolism of the moon, the role of the moon in, in the story, 28 matches. There were moonstones in the creek. There's moonlight. There's lots of different times the word moon shows up. I might also try, you know, the color white keeps recurring. I want to see the color white. I'm trying to make an argument about the use of the author's use of color, how he sort of paints a visual picture. Here I have, let's see, 36. 36 matches for the color white. You know, that says something. We're seeing the fact that we've had the recurrence of this color so many times already is giving us a clue that perhaps it plays a role. Now, this can... Those of you who've used a Shakespeare concordance where you are, it's exactly this, but it's a print version of how many times certain words show up in the text. Um, this may be familiar. It's not the end-all, be-all of literary analysis, but it is one possible entry point into a discussion. Sometimes it's just that a student has noticed a pattern and they wonder to themselves, is this really a pattern? Has this really showed up? They can... Um, they can actually check that. They can say, you know, I feel like the color white keeps showing up. Well, how would they verify that? How would they know that, yes, they are on the right track? They have noticed um, a quality that, that's, that's worth paying attention to. They can type white in and see there's 36 matches in the novel. So these are some of the ways, again, through notes and marks. Again, I clicked that this tab over here. 
produces my notes and marks. I can follow my notes. What is the pattern of my notes? I can follow some of my highlights and see what the pattern is. I can use the search function. There's also this table of contents, which again is not always as useful, but sometimes it is. So these are some of the ways that a student might go about uh, collecting quotes to use in a literary analysis essay.